The four celebrations of the new year commences. We review the major political events that have taken place in Nigeria and make predictions for the coming year. And on the last day of the year 2020, President Muhammadu Buhari signs the 2021 budget into law. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladeni. Welcome to Plus Politics. From the NSAS protests which turned into chaos to the tussle for the Edo and Ondo state governorship seats, then diverting to the crisis which rocked all the which rocked the All Progressives Congress APC and saw Adam Soshomole leaving the seat of the national chairman of the party. These and so much more have made up the political terrain of the country in the year 2020. Today, we review these incidences and try to make predictions for the coming year. Joining us to dissect and analyze this issue is Adeni Ikunu, a political analyst. Good evening, Adeni Ikunu. Uh, good evening, Kaede, and thank you for finding me worthy to help round off an interesting <laughs> year called 2020. Uh, thank you for bringing me here. Quite interesting, yeah. yeah Quite interesting, it. yeah. Yes, I do. And uh, later on, we'll be joined by Zakar Bala, who will also be sharing his own thoughts on this issue. Yeah. Yes, 2020, at a time, I was almost making, call it a fearful prediction that yeah. there was not going to be any election because of the COVID-19, which actually ravaged not just the country, but all over the world. I even went as far as thinking... The historical uh, U.S. election was not going to take place because uh, it has never been where that election wouldn't take place because it's enshrined in their constitution. Yeah. But lo and behold, the new normal held its way and elections took place across different parts of the world. Yeah. We had Ghana election. We had uh, U.S. election. We even had Cote d'Ivoire election. We Guinea, had some Guinea, Guinea also had election. Central African Republic election. Quite a loaded year. Mali also interim government. So that's we have true. Uh, but interesting, um, it tells you that within the scheme of political administration across the world, uh, political leadership appears to be uh, on a scale of one to ten, eight over ten in terms of importance, and that's why we see that um, despite the lockdown, the destruction and the disruption of economic lives, the political uh, uh, office holders and the political hagglers did not allow that which seemed to be uh, important to them uh, to stall. So what did mm. they do? They went ahead. If you check Nigeria, at the height of the COVID, they were talking about restrictions. But at the height of the COVID that they said seems to be very dangerous virus, uh, point of note, the virus is real, but the lies surrounding the virus uh, is really overscaled. Now, people still went out and did their campaigns, and we saw how very carefree people were. So if you check within the political sphere, even in the U.S., uh, the touted leader of democracy, of course, statistics shows that the U.S. is not among even the top 30 countries in terms of adherence uh, to democratic principles. So that is a fact of the matter. Uh, they went ahead and did all they did, and any time it has to do with people relating. For instance, Christmas, virtually many countries of the world, because of what they call the second wave is on lockdown. But I tell you, if we had any elections slated for December, they would have done the election. Because if you look at the first wave, at the height of it, people had it. In expecting the second wave, the November 3 elections of the U.S. held. If you check other African countries, as we've mentioned, the last quarter of this year saw them hold elections. It tells you that those within the political class have something that they feel is of priority to them than many people's economic lives, many people's social lives, because this celebration has been very low-key. Uh, but that being said, we cannot ground countries 
leadership must be something we do not Interesting. put lock and keys on. Interesting. So we have to move I, ahead. I, I would have said that uh, Kunkunu and his uh, not unpopular op opinion this yeah. time around, but quite controversial opinion. It's controversial, but I'm going to you the facts. I agree. I said I'll give you the facts. They lock down people's economy, people's I agree businesses, with you. everything. But let's, let's quickly get into quite a lot of issues. We want to touch them one okay, by good. one. Let's do it. Yes, interesting. Uh, we, we will have to start from the last quarter of the year, okay. and that has to do with the NSAS, where yeah. we saw some kind of uh, historical protest. We didn't have the Femi Falano at the forefront. We didn't have uh, the Wally Shinka at the forefront. We didn't have the Tunde Bakari. We had some kind of uh, unpopular names that shook the country to its knees, yeah. where we saw responses. That's another discussion, whether the responses were genuine or not. So what is the big deal here, and where do we go from here? Let's review it and make some kind of impact it made. You see, when you undertake certain researches, um, one of the things that you'd spend is good money to do proper researches regarding what caused a shot, regarding the trends of the time. And um, the NSAS protest actually has saved government and individual researchers lots of money because they could do or find a lot that could be deployed for their research in terms of the mindset of Generation X that we have at the moment. It therefore means that the most populous African nation has led, again, Sub-Saharan Africa to understand that what used to be is getting phased out. Two days ago, uh, on Fox 36, a Florida TV station, the NSAS protest was a discussion this same week that we find ourselves where four anchors were surprised to hear that the police officer earns, on the average, $150 a month, but the lawmaker earns about $76,000 a month. The anchors, four women, were shocked, and a Nigerian American was on TV. Let me leave his name out. Anybody who actually has access to foreign media would understand what I've said. In Florida, it was a major discussion. October has gone. November has gone. This is December, and it's still a topical issue outside the country. It means that it caught the attention of the international community. It did. And it begins to make us feel, who are we and what should we do? Then at the same time, the political class must understand that what used to be cannot continue. And if you check the disgraceful inconsistencies within the political class, as well as security operatives, I said disgraceful because there has been a thousand and one inconsistencies among them that is so shameful for the international observers to even look at on the international mm -hmm. media. So if they had said at some point that they were not there, at some other point, they were sent. At some point, they fired blanks. At some point, they carried the live ammunition. At some point, they fired the live ammunition. The inconsistencies alone could make you wonder, for goodness sake, who are we talking to? Then at the same time, they talked about the fact that people were not shot at. People came out at the same time. They said, no. Those who were shot at, some of them actually lost certain limbs. They also came out. The things they denied looked at them in the face. So looking forward now, I think one of the things that the authorities must take from this is they cannot continue the way they are doing things, especially as it concerns the relationship of security operatives with the citizens. Don't also forget we are talking about police oftentimes that has the responsibility for the security of our lives within the country. But the police that should take responsibility of dealing with bandits don't deal with bandits, but they took responsibility of dealing with citizens that are harmless. And at the same time, we found out that the central bank as well as the Caught in Abuja that gave that particular paperwork to what freeze the accounts of people have also demonstrated how full of lies they are. Because at some point they said they caught a God injunction to freeze their accounts. At another point, the court said, These things I'm saying can be verified. It, they are not my words. They and, are words and, of. And, the, and the, 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 the reality, the real. Uh, the other part of it is that we still have to wait for the court on what no, no, will come out. Well, the court you know? said, and I quote, that uh, they actually froze the, the accounts unknowingly because they, they, they are trying to prevent some people some that they observe. Yes, yeah, some companies. So tell me how you took individual names and include it in the names of companies. So, that Kuno, is, that, Kuno, that, the that, point that, I'm making is yes, please. it's quite large, and you have been one of those uh, analysts who have done justice to that issue, you know, because of the shortness of time. Okay, good. I love the way you started. Yes, the yes. idea of it's still being discussed in many forums yes, of course. outside this country, yes, which it means is. that it will go down history as very, very successful 
protest, in yeah. my own view. Yeah. Because some would say that, oh, I think it turned sour. I think it defeated the purpose. Do you really think that the culture of protest is back? Do you really think that people will not be taken for granted? Do you really think that the youths have resuscitated their hope in believing that this country can be fixed? When Hence, say, the protest. Good. When you say youth, uh, just allow me to take a very big knife and hmm. put it on the Nigerian map and cut north central, upward south. The, new, the youth from north central Nigeria upwards to the southern part of the entire south will continue to protest. North west and north east will continue to keep quiet. Will not speak against issues that affect them, but will be quick in the future, quote me that I'm saying this thing, to react to people who speak against those who perhaps are not delivering on their promises of political leadership. I wouldn't want to quote you because uh, yeah, yeah. I, I remember having this discussion and we had somebody from Kaduna yeah. and he vehemently opposed to that view that the youths in the north were also protesting. No, no, I, I wonder... That uh, it was underreported that they did their best to say that we want end to SARS. That this, is actually the political this, class. This is it, let me tell you. We have Gotel as a very popular TV up north. We have other media houses up north. As a matter of fact, we have some media houses who have their offices, functional operational offices in different parts of the north. I'm saying here that nothing could have been underreported if actually the protests was action. were as consistent as it is. Nobody would ever underreport that. But what was actually reported that we heard was that some people are saying they wanted SARS saying things that wanted to undermine what was not actually meant and for people. And you're sure it wasn't out. from the political class? I wouldn't want to speak for them because as far as I'm concerned, I was practically at every of the protest points in Lagos and I reported a number of times that certain things were happening and I even asked questions and I put okay. interviews out there for people to consume. So I'm saying here that protests will continue to be the norm in the southern part of Nigeria. Then of course when we even talk about the North Central, you can mention Bainway, you can mention Plateau, you could talk about maybe Kogi State. But when you talk about places like Nasarawa, who's affinity with Abuja, don't forget what they did to the people in Abuja. Of course, there were protests in Abuja, especially at the lawmakers' home That's or true. the houses, but they tried to stop them. Okay. Wanna, yeah, so, so let's say that in the South, yes, in the North, no. Okay, your opinion. Quickly, yeah, let's, opinion. Touch, let's touch the other issue. Yeah. Now, two important elections happened. And uh, it was a defining period in our political yeah. uh, discourse. And that has to do with Edo. Although nothing much happened, but mm. in Edo State, what is the way forward? Are we likely to have a deja vu of a sort to say that Godfatherism God is a bygone issue? Okay, let's use the word Godfatherism very carefully here. Um, if you use uh, Godfatherism, in the sense of the popular uh, Italian movie, uh, Al Pacino, um, you'd find a lot of things that are sinister. But if you use Godfatherism uh, to mean loosely, one would nurtures in preparing one for perhaps an elective office, or one would support having discovered that you have the potentialities to deliver in a particular course. I'll say a little bit of thumbs up. Um, if you even say, for instance, that the likes of Donald Trump never had a godfather, I would disagree with you. Those who saw him through were those who held blue-collar jobs, those who believed that, well, it's not all about the left, but of course the conservatives could make sense of it. So at some point, your godfather or godmother, uh, let's be maybe gender sensitive <laughs> before they call for our next year, uh, when we say godfather here, godfather could mean an individual who is a colossus. For instance, you talk about Ali Modishari, who was the godfather of Kachala, who is no more uh, the governor, the first governor of Bono State when they returned to democracy in uh, 1999. So what I want to say is godfather would be so wrong when you talk about somebody who pushes someone who doesn't have the qualities to lead into political office and ensures that the person get there for selfish purposes. But Godfather could be looked at from a very positive point of view where somebody says, I'm going to stand with you because I believe you can do the job. Okay. I don't want all of this. For instance, people applauded uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Um, that's not his real name according to research he's done, really. Uh, but of course, that's the name we know him by. Uh, so they, they applauded him because they felt you actually stood by somebody that took over from you, Fashola, and we saw what he did. 
We also saw how we stood by Ambody until Ambody said, we can't continue to run Lagos like this, and they use all of the political connections to get him out of office. Now we have Babajide Sonwoluwu for the greater part of his tenure, has not really done much, except, of course, talk about COVID and certain things. Maybe after COVID has gone, you begin to work. Because Do the assessment. I, so after COVID has gone... Trust me, maybe, it's, yes, it's a discussion that uh, yes, I, I, I wish we could exhaust, but yeah. let's see how we we'll still do justice to it. We understand that we're being joined by uh, Zaka Bala, who is a political analyst. Good evening, Bala. Thank you. Uh, good evening, and uh, good evening, viewers. I, I, I can see that you're already in the groove. I can see that smile on your face. But, you know, we've waited Correct. for you, and now we have you. Let's quickly get your thoughts on some of the major events that happened this year. Uh, let me just give you a recap of some of the things uh, I didn't know you couldn't mention. The fact that um, the protest is still successful, as we speak, that is still being discussed in U.S., in some of the major TV stations, and that tells us that uh, that thing wasn't just the a fun fair, so to say. But I would like to get your thoughts. Right. And there's something important that he said, that going forward, the culture of protest may be back, but it might just be lopsided, just in the South, and that the Northern youth are yet to wake up to say no to what they think is not accurate. Maybe you have an endorsement to that position. Uh, first of all, uh, let me start by defining protest my own way <laughs> my own way uh protest to to by my my personal explanation or expression simply means expressing concerns you know and when you are expressing concerns you, you are either not completely uh in tune with what is going on or you, you are not comfortable with the trajectory of the way things are going. Uh, protest does not necessarily mean you you hate the person that is that 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 is leading you or the person that is heading the affairs. But protest is just a way of expressing your own concerns. And when you express your concerns, you are not necessarily hundred percent correct uh, or hundred percent wrong. You just want that your direction to be looked into in probably general interest of probably a family, a corporation, or a nation. So as far as I am con uh, I am concerned, uh, the, 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 the NSAS protest was just to draw the attention of, of our leaders to look, to look in a direction that probably the citizens felt certain things were not going right uh, based on the attitude of our security agents. And it didn't mean that uh, our security agents were completely wrong or the, the, the protesters were 100% correct. It was just a way of bringing their attention that probably something was not going right and it might affect the image of the country, the growth of the country politically, economically, and, and socially. So, so whenever we talk about protests, uh, I will appreciate it if our current leaders and future leaders look at it from that angle. Okay, quickly, let me, uh, we've moved in into the core politics now. We're looking at uh, the Edo in particular, because Ondo seems not to have to, some kind of drama that we expected. But in Edo state, what is the take home? Maybe I should even ask you on the national TV, which state are you from? Well, I, I'm from Kaduna state. Okay, good. But I grew up mainly, largely, uh, spent a greater part of my time in life in Borno state very close to where okay. Boko Haram has been ravaging uh, okay. uh, the Good. country, but I'm currently in Lagos and a proud Lagosian. Interesting, interesting. Uh, uh, but uh, don't forget the last question I asked you before we come to that, but we've moved into core politics now. What is the message there? Uh, some resonate the issue of no more Godfederism. It is not, you are not the one to tell us where to go. You remember how... Obaseki was threatened and that the people told whoever were behind or were, were against him that we would decide our fate. Well, uh, to be honest, there is no straightforward answer hmm. to that. Uh, when, when, when my colleague was, was, was expressing his own uh, views or opinion in the, in the studios, I mean, he was talking about uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, 
I mean, it, it's not something to, to, to doubt that Bola Ahmed Tunubu has planted a lot of political leaders today. Some will forever remain grateful to him. Some may never even appreciate him. It is also clear that he has actually planted the, the, the seed of political landscape. You know, I mean, there are people who have had the opportunity of being blessed by God, like Bola Ahmed Tinibu, but they didn't help anybody. But in the case of Bola Ahmed Tinibu, to the best of my knowledge, he, he, he helped so many people that ha are not even from his state. There was something that happened to Bola Ahmed Tinibu, and, and for the first time I was emotional, and I was very close to tears. During the NSAS protest, I had the, the audios of how some people were who called him on the phone, and when they were saying, you, you send the, the military to do this, you send the military to do that. Honestly, I thought Bola Ahmed Tinibu was going to tell them that, hey, you children, don't you know I'm, I'm older than your father? Don't you know I can give birth to you? Why not respect me? I was surprised he couldn't be harsh. He was struggling to answer. He said, please listen to me. Let me explain. Then they were blasting him again. He said, okay, allow me to also explain my part. I didn't send the military. Honestly, I never knew Bola Ahmed Tinibu could be so down to earth like that. Because some politics, some politicians that have gotten to his level can be brutal. Okay. But from the way those youths and were blasting him and he was saying, please allow me to explain. I, honestly, I fell for him. So back to the issue of Godfatherism. It, it depends. Like I heard about the case of Edo from you, our colleague in the studio. But come to look at also the case of Zulu. I mean, Zulum was, 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 despite the other people around, I mean, Shetima felt Zulum was, was, was a better person. And he decided to, to bring him up. Today, you will say Shetima was the godfather of Zulum. And from the way Zulum is performing, I mean, it is very clear that sometimes this godfatherism, one way or the other in life, somebody have, have to, has to discover somebody. If my, my father discovered my mother, brought her up, met her and his wife, gave birth to, 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 to me. As far as I'm concerned, my, my father was my mother's godfather. And he was but, a good godfather. Some will appreciate, some will never okay. appreciate Let me you. come back to Kunu here. I, 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 I just hope I can overcome this temptation. Quite a lot of issues are just throwing straight into my face. Another major issue, let me jump one, the next one, and go straight to Bielsa and Imo State. Yeah. Quite interesting episodes there. We yeah. had a case of... Uh, Oh, when it was time of Imo, the people in power have turned down the judgment to the extent that they called the governor of Imo State, the Supreme Court uh, governor. Yeah. And when it happened to APC and they lost out in Bayelsa, people were like, I think the judiciary is being vilified. I mean, it's being uh, exonerated now that to say that it is not about party, it's about the law. Reviewing these two cases, yeah. what's your take? Uh, well, in both cases, they went to court. In both cases, INEC was involved. In both cases, the court and INEC actually examined what was before them. And in both cases, there was a consensus formed and the person who should be there was, was taken out. Hmm. If you look at Opus um, certain votes were not given consideration. And when that was reviewed, they found out that he had more votes. And that's how Hedio had left office. Uh, that's a fact of the matter. Uh, I wouldn't know what people that are saying... Uh, is a Supreme, Supreme Court judge. I wouldn't know where they would have expected him to get the verdict. It should not have been in any office of any political organization. Then when you switch gears and you now talk about uh, but what Bayeza. happened to, 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 to David Leon, uh, what happened there, yeah. you found out that somebody didn't have the proper certification and the person had up to four different names used at some point or the other. <laughs> it is one of the most ridiculous things that ever happened. And at the same time, I think that... After that was discovered, they allowed this person in question to walk free. As a matter of fact, after the court decided that this candidate could never have been fielded because you've got duplicity of names, and therefore we couldn't verify if Certificate A or Credential B belongs to you, then what do we do? We, so, we were thinking that the court would take it off from there and say, oh, God, falsification of identity and the rest of it all should attract certain sanctions. But the man walked free. They went to Abuja, they were welcomed by the president, they were consoled for their losses, and life, go, life went on. So if you look at this position, I think that one of the things that INEC must step up to do is to see how when we have issues of uh, falsification of perhaps identity of the individual, hmm. 
then such could actually be taken to court where we examine it critically. If at all there are punitive measures or certain amounts of money to be paid for the things so you have done. In clear terms, it's not just enough to remove them from office. Do, they do should you, also face do, do you know what? a stiff up and out. The reason the court should examine this is to deter others. From who trying it might. again. So when they find out that the person who falsified identity or names uh, had to pay maybe about 20 million naira, and if the person doesn't pay, the person is reminded or the payment is affected, people would attempt to either stay clear. So these are also very we'll important. Or go to clear their papers. You know, <laughs> whatever it is. We also don't forget that something closely tied to that was what we saw that happened with Adeleke Inoshu, hmm. where later on it's all about what credential did you bring? So the fact remains that when you have things like that happen, rather than let it go with the winds, there might be need for the court to listen one more time and see if there are certain sanctions or penalties okay. that could be paid for such kind Beautiful. of... Uh, Beautiful. Yes, uh, Zakhar, let me quickly get your thoughts on these. Uh, the, 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 the drama that happened in uh, Bielsa and... Uh, uh, what's the other state oh, oh, now? Imo state now. In Imo state. And uh, I, I also don't want us to go into what is happening in Edo because that one is still before the court. Yeah. What lessons do we need to yeah. take out from there? Okay, let me start with Imo state. To be honest, uh, what happened to in Imo state, to me, I want to look at it uh, differently. Okay. But, and, and I want to say I'm not somebody who is sectarian or who is political, or even who, who is sectional. But honestly, what happened in the case of Imo State clearly made me to feel that there is something called destiny. <laughs> honestly, if God destined that somebody will sit somewhere, that person will sit somewhere. If not, when you look at how things happen in, in Imo State, no pundit, no mathematical calculations, no political calculations, will have made anybody to believe that Hope Uzodima will be the sitting governor today. And even before that time, a lot of great people, great Nigerians, have come from that extraction and that state. To me, in the Imo state case, is just a clear case of destiny. God destined that Hope Uzodima will be alive and he will sit on that seat and he will sit and preside on the affairs of the political governance of Imo State. That's just the best way I can explain that. In the case of Bayelsa, uh, what Bayelsa taught me also, you know, you were asking where I was from, and I told you, but I, I, I spent a greater part of my life in, 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 in the South South, in, in River State in particular, right? I, in fact, I spent close to 30 years in River State. The case of Bayelsa also made me to to clearly believe that sometimes politics is local. Politics is local. Because when you look at the records, especially academic records of, of Mr. Lyon, when he speaks and you look at the, the, that state called Bayelsa or the former River State and the great Nigerians that come from there, I was trained political economy by Professor Kimse Okoko of River State. So when you have people like that, great Nigerians like that, and, and Oliver Lyon a match, and it was not a rigged election, it tells you politics is truly local. Then finally on Bayelsa, honestly, that also is a clear indication that if, if a given, you don't need all the certificates, the PhDs, the professorship, the masters, the Harvard papers to, to, to be elected. If they say school start is just school start, stick to the rules. Mm. And if it is not necessary, please stop adjusting Parading documents. It. School start is ordinary for anybody to even be a president, a governor, a senator, unless if the constitution is adjusted. That okay. thing was unfortunate. I feel sorry for all of them, and I feel happy also that my friend Joye uh, Diri is leading, and we pray that he will lead by Elsa well and right. Zaka Bala, I'm, I'm so sorry, and uh, I feel sorry for myself because I know you, both of you have so much to offer me tonight, um, but time is not really on my side. I predicted that this is going to happen. It's unfortunate that I, that I can't help it. So much to still talk about. We would have loved to talk about Toshomole's... Uh, 
uh, uh, unfortunate situation. Would have loved to talk on so many issues that happened this year, but it's unfortunate that we have to end it. Do you mean to say he's been retired uh, from politics? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> right. I just want to confirm, maybe okay. you, were, you know, for want of words, uh, perhaps would also say that um, it will bounce the back. Edu 2020 elections actually saw uh, certain levels of, you know, political relegation for certain persons who either thought that they were demigods. Um, it's very obvious now that we won't argue, uh, even if the case is still in court, but essentially they went to the polls and some people got defeated and some people got pushed aside and some people okay. got pushed up. Interesting. Thank uh, you, Adini, thank for you your for time. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Like Many thanks to you for thank your you. insight thank on you. this discussion. Quite short, but really, really insightful. And uh, we'll take a short break now. And when we return, <music> President Buhari signs the 2021 budget. That is up for discussion. Please don't go anywhere. <music>